Good evening. Uh, the clock says 5 p.m., which is the magic hour for us to begin our p.m. worship service. Glad everyone's here with us. For those online, I know of a, a few people that are worshiping with us online. Glad you could be with us also. Friendly reminder, please turn off your cell phones, set them to mute so we're not interrupted during the service. Visitors, so I'll skip that part of the announcement. We will begin our worship with a prayer. Merciful Father in heaven, we humbly approach you. Father, we thank you so much for another hour that you've given us that we may come together and, and worship you. Father, we pray that. You will please bless us in our efforts to please you, to glorify you, to honor you, and to praise you. We pray, Father, that our hearts and minds will be focused on our worship, and that, Father, we will be strengthened and uplifted by the things said and done here tonight. Father, we thank you for this body of Christians that meets here in, in church. We thank you for the love and dedication of, of each person. Father, we know we are far from perfect, but we thank you for the faithfulness that we see demonstrated over and over again. We pray, Father, that you'll please strengthen us when we're weak. Help us, Father, to, to rely on you for your guidance through your word, and that we, we rely on each other for support when the burden becomes too great for us to bear ourselves. We pray, Father, that you'll be with us now as we continue throughout this hour. We pray that the praise and the honor and the glory that we lift up to you is a sweet aroma to you, Father. We pray that you'll continue to watch over us and help us to live faithfully until that day of judgment. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You would turn to number 316. Number 316. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path rolls from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Number 419. 
But you may also want to go ahead and mark number 143. Number 143 will be the song following the lesson this evening. Number 419. And uh, following the singing of this song, of course, we'll have the scripture reading and then the lesson for the evening. Only in thee, O Savior mine, dwelleth my soul in peace divine. Peace that the world, though all combined, never can take from me. Pleasures of earth, so seemingly sweet, fail at the last my longing to me. This evening's scripture reading is from Acts 14, verses 26 through 28. We're reading from the New King James Version. Acts 14, 26 through 28. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commanded to do to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported that all that God had done with them, and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples.
appreciate the opportunity to make a report this evening of our recent time in Asia. Uh, I've, you know, I've made 80 mission trips in the last 45, 40 years, I mean, and so uh, since 1985, however many years that is, I've kind of lost track. But anyway, uh, COVID has changed everything. Where we used to spend quite a bit of time uh, in the States, and then we travel different countries and, and do certain work. Then when COVID hit, and Etta and I were separated for 13 months because I was here and she was there and I couldn't go there. And she didn't have her visa yet. She couldn't come here. And so uh, after that, we finally got a uh, family visa for me where I can renew my visa every year in Indonesia. And so work, uh, the work has been done over the last uh, COVID years uh, basically online. And it was just this last November that we were finally able to go back to Singapore and New Zealand and do some work. And also uh, in May and June, of this year. We'll be going back to Malaysia, uh, probably not Singapore. We'll go to Malaysia and speak to several of the congregations there. And at the end of our presentation tonight, we'll mention the Chinese Asian Bible Lectureship, which will take place June 8 through 10 in uh, Central Malaysia. And so tonight, we'll simply talk about uh, the work that uh, Ed and I have been doing. Of course, uh, this is a uh, a boring biographical sketch, you don't need to read that, but anyway. Uh, I start out my report wherever I go showing the oversight of the work, and now, of course, this is the work of the Church, Church of Christ, and I'm thankful to be uh, part of this congregation. Uh, I, I, like, I like being where uh, the church oversees my work. There are a lot of mi missionaries, they've got overseers, but they live a thousand miles away. I don't like to do that. I like to be where the church oversees my work. That's why we made the effort to move here after the change was made. And so here's my email address. I've had this email address for years. Somebody might ask, why are you still using Yahoo? Well, I've used it for years. That's why. And so everybody knows that email address. And you see a picture here basically of Southeast Asia, China in the north, Indonesia in the southern part. Uh, this is... A split screen, of course, uh, held the gospel meeting when I was here in September, and that's the picture on the left. On the right, I'm teaching online. This was a Chinese class that I was teaching online. I'll get into more detail with the amount of teaching that I do, uh, primarily Chinese. Of course, I do some English. Uh, just for example, last night, 7.30 p.m., Chinese Bible class in Taiwan, 8.30 worship. Then 4 o'clock this morning, uh, Chinese worship in Malaysia. Yeah, I got up at 3 this morning, so just in case you're wondering. And, uh, and I told Stan I didn't go to sleep this morning during his sermon, so that shows it was a really good lesson because, you know, I'd, I'd been up uh, early. And so but anyway, uh, this is uh, where I set up with the computer and uh, do my teaching primarily through Zoom. We also do something called LINE, L-I-N-E, which is primarily what Taiwan uses. Uh, but uh, Zoom is really my favorite platform that uh, we have available to us in our teaching. Uh, when we left here back in late September, we made our way back through uh, L.A., and I don't have any pictures of that. I do have some pictures coming back <coughs> this time, but we went through L.A., then to Seoul, then from Seoul to Jakarta, and then Jakarta, and then here we are arriving at the airport in Lampong, you see the statues on, this is outside the airplane after we had arrived. This is a, a war hero. Uh, he died at the age of 32, but he was one of the ones who helped to uh, unify that part of Sumatra. Of course, if you know anything about Indonesian history, you know they were under control of the Dutch for 350 years. And then after World War II, they fought for their independence and became an independent nation in August, uh, August 17, 1945. Anyway, arrived in the airport. I remember the first time I went to this airport in 1989. Uh, no jetways. Uh, you, you flew in on a prop jet and you walked down the stairs. And sometimes we still have to walk down the stairs. Uh, but uh, fortunately now they have three jetways in this little airport and it makes it a lot more convenient to get in and out of the plane. 
Now, I mentioned the online work that I do. Here's a picture of a class that I taught on October 19th in Malaysia at Subang Jaya Congregation, and you see the topic uh, that I was discussing. And so we have anywhere from 15 to 25 people that attend this class. It's an every Wednesday night class. I teach it at least once a month. Also, uh, they, we have a 45-minute question and answer session after the lesson. So every week, no matter who's speaking, uh, we have a Q&A uh, for about 45 minutes. And, of course, I take part in that. Sometimes I'm the service coordinator. I coordinate it. And also they call it a convener, uh, takes care of the, the Q&A during that part. So I do that sometimes. This particular week, I was actually doing the teaching. Now, this is the Four Seats College class that I teach, and don't have a lot of windows open because uh, a couple of reasons. This is actually, this is the chapel. Uh, we'll, we'll be having chapel tonight at 725 p.m. church time. Uh, but you see some of the windows open. Uh, on the far left, upper side, is uh, Wang Yongsheng, who is a preacher in Hualien in Taiwan. And then uh, beside me is uh, Jedediah Yen, his son-in-law, who happens to be from mainland China and the current preacher at one of the Chinese congregations in Singapore. Brother Quan Tai Chun uh, also is a Chinese preacher from Singapore and is a regular teacher at the school. Jedediah is also a regular teacher. Uh, on the far right, you see three of our mainland Chinese students who are actually in Singapore. And so they're meeting... You know where Yong, Yong Yao's office used to be, downstairs next to the teacher's lounge. Well, that's where those three students come for the classes. And so, uh, so they're in, in that picture. Then second row is uh, uh, Ang Eng Boon, and Brother Eng Boon is in Malaysia. He's one of the elders of the church in Quang. Uh, he's also the preacher for the Chinese congregation that meets there. Next to him is Brother Xu. Brother Xu is from mainland China. A lot of the people don't open their windows for a couple of reasons. One is sometimes their bandwidth is not good enough. So they keep the windows closed so they have enough bandwidth. Sometimes uh, also they don't have enough data available to them because some of them are using their phone, and so they're not using a computer. But anyway, this is chapel every Monday. Our last chapel is tonight uh, for a month because, as you know, next Sunday is Chinese New Year, and we're taking a month off until the English class, they take a month off between Christmas and uh, after Christmas, or no, after the lectureship until the New Year, but the Chinese do it around Chinese New Year and obvious reasons. Uh, this is the Taijung Bible study and worship every Sunday. We have anywhere, there's uh, 12 uh, windows here. They usually have anywhere from 12 to 15 windows. Uh, the, um, a couple of the windows are actually from the auditorium of the congregation there, uh, last night we had 10 in the building, then we had an additional 15 uh, shooting through the windows, most of them living in Taiwan, of course, I'm uh, odd man out, either being here or in Indonesia. So, so uh, I teach, I preach at the Taichung congregation the first Sunday of every month. Uh, in February I'll be teaching the sec second Sunday because they're having a, a guest speaker come from America, and he'll, he'll preach the first Sunday. But usually it's the first Sunday of every month. I preach to the church here, and then I participate in the Bible class. Brother Yo teaches. Brother Yo is the local preacher, and uh, I teach. Uh, I, I participate with him in the Bible class. Um, this is Brother Yo right here. He's the uh, local preacher, and uh, this is one of our families here. The sister here is from Malaysia, married a, a doctor from Taichung, uh, and so uh, we have a we have a. a small group, and of course Stan's been there a number of years ago when we had our gospel meeting there. Uh, here's another Wednesday night class where I taught. I actually did three lessons from the book of Malachi, and I used them uh, the three times in a row that I spoke at the Subang Jaya Church of Christ in Malaysia. Now, we actually went in person to Malaysia last year, and so we left uh, Indonesia and we flew, uh, first we went to Jakarta, then we flew from Jakarta to Kuala Lumpur. It's about an hour and a half flight, something like that, two hours at the most. And so the first day that we were there, we met two of the members from Section 17. 
This is Heliang and Kalina, uh, who are members at the Section 17 congregation. We were actually eating a late lunch there, and so this is a picture of them uh, the very first day that we were there. That night, we met with uh, Charlie Chan, not the Charlie Chan from the movies, but uh, uh, the, he had a brother named Stephen Chan. This is Charlie's, Stephen's older brother, one of his older brothers, and uh, Stephen passed away last year one of the elders at Klang in Malaysia. But Char Charlie had met this brother many years ago and so invited us to a dinner. So we had a Chinese dinner uh, together at uh, one of the restaurants in the Kuala Lumpur area. Make sure I'm hitting the right button. Go to the next one, please. Thank you. Now, I'm not showing you much food in this presentation. In the past... I've taken pictures of food, and people, at least some people, seem to like the pictures of the food. But my wife says, you show too many pictures of food. So there's food on this table. But uh, these are uh, some members from the Subang Jaya Chinese congregation, and they took us out to lunch one day, and so this is a picture that we had together at that time. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is another couple, the couple on the left. Uh, this is uh, Edward and Josephine Lau. They are also members of the Subang Jaya congregation. When we went there, the first thing we did was we taught at the Subang Jaya congregation. So I taught on Friday night and then taught on Sunday morning worship and Bible study. And so in between, we had made uh, meals with some of the members uh, that were members there. And Josephine Lau is Poi Fun's sister just in case, I don't know if you knew that or not, but anyway, that's Poi Fun's sister, uh, Peter Chin's uh, wife in Singapore. Next, oh, I got it, I guess. Did you do it or did I? Did you forward that or did I? Did, I did, okay, good, well, maybe it's working again. Okay, so this is the Subang Jaya Church. On the left, I'm speaking at one of the lessons. On the right is a picture of uh, Etta and I when we were there, and uh, the crowds are starting to come back a little bit, uh, post-COVID. They were a lot slower in opening things back up there than we were here. And so they still have to wear masks, uh, government regulations. They have to wear masks in the assemblies, in the church building. But they are starting to get some of the people to come back to the services and also are uh, stopping their Zoom um, uh, broadcast because some people are using that as an excuse for not coming back to the building for class and for worship. And so some of the congregations have stopped doing that. Here's a picture of the group. When we were there on the 13th of November of uh, 2022, and so both top picture and the bottom picture are the same group of people, just a couple different ways of shooting it. And so this was after the morning worship and Bible study. They have worship first, then Bible study following. This is lunch after the services on Sunday morning at Subang Jaya. On the left here is Brother Lee Chi Teen. Brother Lee Chi Teen has been a member in Malaysia for a number of years. He worked as a lawyer for the government for a number of years. Then he retired. Then the government offered him another position in government, different from what he was doing. And so he does a lot of traveling around in Malaysia. This is Danny Ng, one of the members there. And then this is... Uh, uh, Brother Chi Ting's wife, Beeline, and then this is Timothy Ting. Timothy is from uh, Ipo, which is up more in the north part of Malaysia, and I've met his mom and dad at different times and also have been to Ipo uh, at different times to, to teach. Okay, uh, Carl, do it again, please. There we go. Now, one thing we did, I wanted to take Edna to see some things in Malaysia that she'd never seen before, and this is the Bo Tea Plantation. B-O-H, that's the name of it. Don't ask me why they named it that. But anyway, that's the name of it. It started back in 1929 and was owned and operated by British individuals who were then in control of Malaysia. Later on, it was turned over to Malaysian ownership. But we went to the Bo Tea Plantation uh, to see the tea, the plants, and also to buy the tea because this is the tea I drink when I drink hot tea. I drink bow tea. And so you can ask me about it sometime. Here are some uh, 
Here, are, here is just a small glimpse of the tea plants all over these hills. And this is just one section of the tea plantation. This is a balcony that is built out from the uh, tea center where you can go out and you can get good pictures of, uh, of there. You can go to my uh, Facebook page and see some of those pictures. Uh, but uh, this is a, a big plantation. Now, my wife said after we went there, she said, oh, we got plantations bigger than this in Indonesia. And so when I get back, I got to go look at the uh, Indonesian plantations because I have not seen them like that. Next, Carl. Uh, back there you go. Uh, we celebrated our fourth anniversary in Malaysia. Uh, the, near the day of our anniversary, some of the members took us to a restaurant, a very, very nice restaurant, and they had a, a buffet dinner. And uh, we were able to eat uh, our dinner along with about 10 or 12 of our Chinese brethren there at uh, mostly from Section 17. And Edda likes to sing. And so if you'll look over on the, the right side, you'll see she's singing. And uh, this guy was performing, you know, it's just part of the entertainment. Over there they have a lot of karaoke. Uh, but not only karaoke, they have live performers in the restaurants, but if you want to get up, stand, and sing, uh, they'll let you. And so you do what? For a while. Yeah, for a while. And so anyway, Anna sang a couple of songs for us that night, and uh, songs that that guy was able to play on his guitar. This is a picture on the stairs after we left the restaurant. It's uh, connected to a big hotel there in, in uh, the Kuala Lumpur area. In the front, is uh, Hannah Leong right here. Uh, Hannah is Mike and June's daughter. Uh, Mike was my first uh, liaison contact in Malaysia in 1999. I went to Malaysia in 1985 for the first time, but was only there a week. In 1999, I went back, and since 1999, I've gone to Malaysia at least once and sometimes twice a year uh, to conduct meetings. Uh, of course, COVID interrupted that, and I had another interruption or two in the early 2000s. But Mike is a, a barrister there in the KL and educated in England at Oxford. And uh, so I also performed their wedding ceremony back in 2004. Uh, Hannah speaks English, Cantonese, Mandarin, and Malay. Not bad for a 9- or 10-year-old girl. And her Mandarin is pretty good. Uh, her manner is much better than her dad's. And then this is uh, Mao Hui and his wife. Mao Hui is from mainland China. His wife is from uh, Malaysia. They married uh, about five years ago. And Mao Hui is now the preacher for the Chinese congregation at Section 17. They have two little children that you can see there in the picture. Uh, this is Section 17, one of the congregations in the KL area. This is their English worship. Back in 99, when I went to uh, KL for the first time, there was a congregation at KL, there was Klang, there was Subang Jaya. That was about it. Uh, there are now a number of other congregations that are in existence there. Uh, Section 17 is one of them. Cheroff is another. There's a number of congregations meeting. Some of them only have English services. Some have both English and Chinese. I think Klang is the only congregation in Malaysia that has elders. Uh, but, uh, but otherwise, uh, there, there have fairly good numbers in some of the different congregations. This is a number of those who attended on this particular Sunday morning. Remember, this is post-COVID, and so there were a number of people that were not there because of COVID, and so they may have uh, tuned in online. This is lunch after... Uh, after that particular Sunday at Section 17, when uh, I got my food, I guess, but not everybody does. This is uh, Edwin Chan, his wife, Alicia, Peter Bang, and his wife, Michelle. Uh, I've known uh, Peter and Michelle for a number of years. Uh, Edwin's wife, Alicia, is Stephen Liu's sister. Stephen's a member of Malacca. And of course, I've been to Malacca a number of times preaching in the both the English and the Chinese congregations there. This was in a mall, food court. Uh, in KL. Uh, here's a, just uh, some cameo pictures with Edda. This is uh, Janet Leong and, uh, and uh, Kalina, uh, members there at Section 17. And of course, the Leongs are longtime 
friends of ours as well. And so I uh, took a picture of them. And then this is Sunday night. This is the Chinese service. So I have English in the morning, uh, worship and Bible study, and then at night they have the Chinese worship. And so I spoke at this service. Now, in the regular rotation, every second Sunday, I preach uh, in the Chinese congregation via Zoom. So last Sunday was the 8th. I'd been in the country for two less than two days, jet lag, etc., and I got up at 4 o'clock to preach in Mandarin Chinese at the congregation there. So <coughs> uh, I didn't think I'd make it this morning to get up at four, uh, 3 to, to make it, but I did. So anyway, this is a, a number of those who attend the Chinese service there at section 17. So point this way. Back one. <coughs> one of my one of my favorite foods, and I'm not showing it here, but one of my favorite foods is uh, roti telur bawang. Now I'm learning Bahasa in an, I'm learning the Indonesian language now. Indonesian and Malaysia are very similar in their in their vocabulary and in their pronunciation. So roti, some of you know that word, it means bread. It's an Indian word, roti, okay? Talur is egg, and bawang is onion. And so what they do is they have the, the bread dough that they put on a flat, like not skillet, but a flat, hot surface, and then they mix the egg and the onion in with it, and then they cook it like a pancake. And so what it is, it's a, it's a big pancake, but it's not sweet. And so uh, that, that's my favorite dish that I really can only get in Malaysia. Now, you can, buy, you can buy the bread in the frozen food section, maybe at one of the Asian, restaurant, uh, Asian markets, but not the same. Just not the same. Well, anyway, we were there uh, at uh, this little restaurant, and Mike and uh, one of his friends was there for, to treat us uh, for this dinner. And then right across the street, you can't see it in the picture, it's catty corner, was an A&W root beer restaurant. <laughs> now, we have A&W in Indonesia. And Ed and I were in Jakarta back in October, and we went to the restaurant, and I said, I want root beer. By the way, they say root beer uh, in Indonesian language for root beer. It's root beer. And so they said, uh, Tidak, uh, that pu tinak, tidak uh, punya. We don't have. I thought, hmm, we call this restaurant A&W Root Beer, but they don't have any root beer. They got ice cream, they got hamburger, but no root beer. So we went back to Lampong, which is a 20 minute, 25 minute flight from Jakarta, and I went to that restaurant. Root beer. No, don't have it. When, when will you have it? Maybe next year. Maybe next year. <laughs> so I haven't been back to ask them uh, yet. But anyway, we went to Malaysia, and so we went over there, and I asked. I said, you got root beer? Yes, we have root beer. Oh, good. I said, you have a frosted mug? Yes, we have the frosted mug. So they took the frosted mug out of the cooler, you know, and poured that root beer in there. You ever had any Debbie root beer like that, Ken? Oh, man. That's the way to drink root beer, not out of a can, not, definitely not out of a can, out of that frosted mug, and uh, anyway, we, we got to do that while we were there. We finished uh, the teaching that we did in Malaysia, then we boarded uh, Singapore Airlines, we happened to best price we could get, you know, a lot of airlines would fly out of Malaysia back to Singapore, but just so happened the, the best price was Singapore Airlines, so we got to fly on one of the world's best airlines. It was an hour flight, about. And, uh, but, you know, they were very helpful. Uh, the flight attendants on the plane were very helpful, helped us get our luggage and get off the plane. And so we headed for Singapore. Well, we got there, and that night we had a dinner with some of those involved in the Chinese, Forces College Chinese Department. This is, oops, I hit the wrong button. This is John Chan. He's one of the elders at um, the Jerome Church of Christ. They oversee both the English and the Chinese school. This is Anna Chan, his wife. 
and Anna is the secretary and recorder for the Chinese school. She keeps all the records. She records all of the classes. She attends every class that we have and uh, just kind of coordinates all of the students that we have from, from um, Singapore, Malaysia, and uh, mainland China. Then you see Jedediah Yuan. He's one of the teachers in the school and the local preacher. And then this is Eng Boon and his wife, Sue, and their son, Yi Jin. And uh, uh, Brother Wang, you've already seen a picture of him uh, in the chapel picture. And then Ed and me. And so we had a, a Chinese meal the first very, very first night that we were in Singapore. This is the schedule for uh, Singapore lectures. Of course, Stan Stockton was there for the lectureship this year. He got there actually for the graduation and uh, after the lectureship. How long were you there after the lectureship? Two days? Yeah, a couple days. Uh, there's no pictures of Stan Stockton in this, in this report. I have a bunch of them in other reports that I've done, so I didn't put any in this one. I figured he'd have his own report anyway. Anyway, uh, so he, his, his pictures are not in here. Um, next one, Carl. I know you can't read it, but this is the schedule. We had lectureship beginning on Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday during the day. Then in the evening, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at night, we had three different gospel meetings going in the three different congregations. And so we had a number of the members that were there that would spread out throughout the congregations to attend the, the different meetings. And I think Stan spoke at two or all three, all three of the gospel meetings, uh, both uh, Jerong, Lima Pin, and Isai, all three. And Sunday morning at, at Jerong also. And so uh, I just spoke uh, one night at the gospel meeting, and then Sunday morning... I spoke at the Chinese congregation in Jerome, and so I had the privilege to do that, teach in both the worship and the Bible study. Next, Carl. Okay, these are the speakers at the lectureship this year, and we had a number. You see Jennifer uh, Dondorf up there? I know, I know. She's got a new name, but you know her, you know her by the other name, too, don't you? Is it Wormley? Wormley. Yeah, Wormley. Jennifer Wormley, by the way, is up there, too. Uh, be sure to make note of that. And um, you see some of the speakers are from Singapore, some from Malaysia, from, uh, some from the United States, also from the Philippines. And so we had a number of uh, speakers on the program uh, this year. Okay, uh, on the left is Alvin Lee and his wife, Annabelle. They are members at the Kota Kamunin congregation in Malaysia. And uh, they're one of the many young couples that are there. And uh, they're getting ready, as you can see. They're getting ready to have a baby pretty soon. And uh, they're, again, one of the many couples who are uh, either already parents or soon to be parents. On the right is Brother Ng from the Kota Kamunin congregation. And he's one of the elders at that congregation. And so we've uh, spent a lot of time with him through the years. This is the Paul Go family. Paul is a member at the Jurong there in Singapore. He is a fantastic, excellent song leader, teaches singing as well. He also I play, uh, he plays a string instrument. Is it the viola or the violin or one of those? And uh, he also makes some of the instruments. His wife, Anna, is the daughter of David and Abigail Chu. And David was director of Forces College for a number of years. Uh, in the past, and Brother Chu just recently passed away. You can see their children are growing up quickly. Uh, here is Etta with Abigail Chu and uh, with uh, Anna and Grace. And then you see Anna and Grace on the uh, other side with their mother. I was happy to have the opportunity to see them. Several years ago, I think it was uh, 2019, uh, Grace and Anna and their families went to Taiwan. And they just happened to be in Taiwan at the same time we were there. So they were in Taichung when I was there preaching in the meeting. And then we went to Hualien, and so did they. And so when we got over there, uh, we got to see them, and uh, they were doing sightseeing through uh, Taiwan. You know, in, in Singapore, Malaysia, the brethren there like to go places 
where it's cold because it's always hot there, you know. So they go to places like Taiwan or Korea or, or Japan or maybe even, uh, uh, depending on the time of year, Australia and New Zealand because it can be cold there in our summertime. But anyway, I was so happy to see these individuals there at the lectureship. Here's Billy Bland along with um, Su Un and uh, her husband, uh, Ong Wei, and uh, they, are, they are members at Lima Ping. And of course, Billy is uh, a teacher, instructor, uh, co-director of the Memphis School of Preaching in Memphis. And of course, I've known Billy for a number of years. Here again is um, Jedediah Yuan with his wife, Amy. Now, making the connection here for you, Amy is the daughter of the preacher in Hualien, Taiwan. And so Amy, after she graduated from college in Taipei, and she was the number one karate uh, competitor in the whole country of Taiwan when she left. And Brother Wong was the five, uh, five what do you call it, uh, the fifth level black belt uh, himself. And so anyway, uh, Jedediah told me all the kids are, are learning Taekwondo. And so anyway, <clears throat> anyway, Amy went to Four Seas, and Jedediah obeyed the gospel in China, and he went to Four Seas, and they met at Four Seas, and they got married. And now they have four children, and uh, the children will all be Singaporean citizens. Uh, and Amy and, and Jedediah all have their green cards as well, permanent residents. Uh, here again are some members, uh, both from Singapore and Malaysia, this is uh, Amos' wife. Uh, he's one of the elders at Jerong. This is Brother Ang's wife, Shirley, from Kota Kamuni in Malaysia. And then next to her is Grace uh, Chu. Grace has a long Indian name now, so I don't know exactly how to say her married name. Uh, here is Eddie E. Eddie E. is a longtime preacher, teacher in the school, elder now of the congregation in Jerong. Eddie was one of those individuals who went to the Korean Christian College and was educated there back in the 1960s. And so he has been in uh, Jerome, and of course he's Singaporean. He's been there uh, longer than me because he's older than I am. And then on the other side of me is May May Leon. Now you saw the, the family with uh, the little girl that speaks four languages. This is her cousin, okay? Um, Mike Leong has 17 siblings, and this is one of his nieces right here. One of his nieces, I don't know how many nieces he has, but 17 siblings, the same father and the same mother. And uh, so anyway, uh, May May lives in Singapore with her husband now, and that's their little girl. Okay, this is uh, at the Eastside Gospel Meeting where I spoke, and so the night that I spoke, uh, we got together for a picture. Uh, we were competing. Three different places were competing for the numbers. Eastside's building is the smallest of the three. And so even if, we, even if we were full, we could get about 50 people in there. But anyway, we had a, a good number that attended uh, the gospel meeting there. Here is uh, Brother Alvin Lean and his wife, Mary Ann. Uh, Alvin just recently spoke in chapel at the Chinese Department of Fort Seas College. His Chinese is not his first language. Now, his father uh, attends the Chinese congregation at Lima Ping. And uh, interestingly enough, about 10 years ago, his father was introducing me uh, as I was getting ready to speak at Lima Ping in the Chinese worship on Sunday evening. And he was talking about who I was and what I'd done and how long I'd been speaking Mandarin. And then he said to me, he said, uh, he said Brother Grubb, he said, how old are you? And I used the phrase in Chinese, which means about the same, chapadola. I said, about the same. You know, I didn't tell him my age. I just said, about the same. And he said, Brother Grubb is 86 years old this year. <laughs> and I just let it go. <laughs> I just let it go. But anyway, this is his son. And Alvin used to work with Lee Martin. When they started the new congregation at Eastside, then he moved over there to become the preacher for that congregation. I, I take a picture here. The kids just love Etta wherever she goes. Uh, and so uh, I don't know all these children 
Stanley, you know them? You know the children? I don't know the children. Okay, the, the girl on the left is Vietnamese, uh, the back left inside Anna, and her husband is one of the graduates of the school. And uh, the other side, is she also from Vietnam? Yeah, both of them from, from Vietnam. But the one on the right uh, is a graduate of Fortune's College. Yeah, they're not very tall, so you can see their height. Uh, this is another family from the east side congregation, and they took us out to eat on the Friday night before the gospel meeting took place. Uh, here I am speaking. I spoke on Saturday morning, the last lesson on Saturday morning at the lectureship. And Saturday was the last day for the lectureship. And then on the right is a picture of Ulus Nair. Ulus is a member of the English congregation. Of course, he's uh, from an Indian ethnic background, but of course he's Singaporean. He retired as either a major or a colonel in the Singaporean army. Uh, the first time I met him was in... Tasmania in 1997. He was living in Australia then uh, as part of the Singaporean army. I'm not sure what he was doing there. But he came for the lectureship. His long trip from the northern part of uh, uh, Darwin was where he was. He was in Darwin, which is way up in the north of Australia. And Tasmania south, the island south of, uh, of Australia. And so anyway... Uh, but that's the first time I've met him, and I've known him since then, so that's a long time. But I got to see him on this trip. Uh, Lucas Queck and his wife, uh, Zelda, uh, they took us out to meal, and you can see uh, Su An and uh, uh, Junwei, I'm sorry, his name's Junwei, Ong Junwei. Uh, they, they also went, and uh, this was a very expensive restaurant. Uh, don't ask me how much it cost. We didn't pay, but that's a fake fire in the fireplace there, the TV screen. But anyway, it's a very nice restaurant, and we had an opportunity to visit with them and their two children. I remember the, the last time I met them before COVID, uh, the little boy, he was just a baby. And uh, I went up to talk to Lucas, and he had the baby. He just gave me the baby. You know, gave me the baby. baby screaming his head off, you know. Who is this guy, you know? Because usually I don't take a child, I never force a child to let me hold it. And so, but this one was forced upon me. Anyway, he's grown up a little bit, and uh, so that was an enjoyable meal together. This is the Chinese congregation at Jerong on the, what we would call the second floor is the English service. They call it the first floor. This is the ground floor. Uh, we call it the first floor. So this is the ground floor of the church building. The first floor is, first and second floors are the Jerong uh, English auditorium and classroom. Then the third, the next story is the school. And the school is on the top, top floor of this building. So it's a big building. And so on Sunday morning, I spoke in Mandarin Chinese in the Bible class as well as the worship. And we had a good crowd, as you can see. Uh, I don't know how many were actually online on this particular day, but there was probably uh, around 60 that were in attendance uh, there at that time. Our last day in Singapore, uh, if any of you have ever been to Singapore, uh, they always decorate. You know, even if it's not Christmas, they decorate. But you can see the decorations here. And they decorate all the time, not only in the airport, but all through the city, especially on Orchard Road. And uh, so anyway, we're getting ready to uh, to go out to get on our plane and go. Uh, we went to the Jewel, too. We hadn't been to the Jewel yet. This is kind of a, a waterfall, constant running waterfall uh, near the airport that you can go to. And so, so we got to do that. We've been talking about it for a long time. We never got to do it. So we finally got to do it this time. Okay. We left Singapore on the 30th of November, I think. And then on the 2nd of December... The Taijong lectureship started, and that was all online. And so, uh, of course, the people that were there in Taijong were there, but but we had we had it on Zoom instead of on the L I N E, the line, because a lot of the mainland Chinese they don't have line, they have Zoom. And so you see this screen, you're thinking, wow, no pictures of anybody. That's because I have some. I, I have some pictures of, of those who attended. 
but some of them are from mainland China. And I've always had the practice of protecting our members. You know, if for some reason that got back to someone who could cause them problems in their home, I don't want to do that. So you can see some of the names. We had 86 windows for the Ty Jones Lectureship. And some of those windows, of course, had more than one person in them. And so we had at least 100 people to attend the lectureship. And the church building in Ty Jones, if we had them all in the building, wouldn't, they wouldn't fit. They only put about 50 people in the church building. So we had uh, upwards of 100 people to attend Friday night and the Saturday during the day. Now, Sunday morning we didn't have that many. But we have still had 25 or 30 windows on Sunday morning, and I spoke on Sunday morning because I, traditionally I've always been the speaker on Sunday morning because everybody else has to leave and go back to the home congregation for their Sunday worship, and so I'm usually there to speak on Sunday. But this was the lectureship December 2 through 4 of last year. Next, Carl. Uh, now this is the normal Taiwan worship. This is not on Zoom. But this is what is called line. And so some of these, oh, sorry about that. Some of these are just pictures, not the person. I think Brother Yo and I are the only real people here. Everybody else is just a, a picture of them. But you can see we had, uh, we had uh, 18 windows here. What did you say? Yeah, Mario's up there for, for one of the families, but we had 18 windows here on this particular day, and of course some of those windows had four people behind them, or two people behind them, so, so this was a good, a good day uh, of attendance, but we have this every week in Taichung. Now I know you can't see this very well, these are my students that I'm currently teaching, and their names, and then their midterm grades. Now I'm getting ready tonight at 7 o'clock when I start teaching Monday morning in Singapore at 9 a.m., that's tonight at 7, I'll be reviewing for the upcoming test that they're going to take on Wednesday. Now, we're having the test on Wednesday because Sunday's Chinese New Year, and they'd like to be out a little early so that they can get ready for Chinese New Year. So, so we're having the test on Wednesday. And I don't really mind because the day they take a test, I don't have to be there. And so they'll take the test, and so tonight will be my last class for this Order in teaching in Chinese. Again, speaking at the Subang Jaya congregation, this was December 21st. Uh, the purpose of Jesus' coming was my topic on this occasion. Then every quarter, the last Wednesday night in every quarter, we have a topic with two speakers and a convener. I use a convener on this occasion. And then we have a little bit longer, instead of 45 minutes, we have about an hour of Q&A. So the topic for the last Wednesday night in 2022 was winning souls for Jesus Christ. Now this is the Jakarta International Airport. We went from Lampong. You remember the two statues I showed? Uh, we went from that airport to Jakarta. And then we had to wait out in the departure area until we could check in our luggage and then we could go in and then there's a lounge inside that we can take advantage of it. But I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, this restaurant or not. It's a bakery. And it, it's, uh, it's, I think that's French. I don't speak French. But anyway, <clears throat> um, we were able to go there for a while and then the check-in for luggage is right across the, the way like where I'm standing. And then over here is immigration. So we just walk around here, go into immigration, and go through. And so we did that uh, on our way back. Now, when we got to Sing when we got to Seoul, we found out <clears throat> that there had been a, a miscommunication in our dates. And so we arrived in Seoul on the 4th of January, and our flight didn't leave till the 5th. And I thought it was Delta's fault, but it wasn't Delta's fault. Or may have been Delta, so I don't know. Anyway, when we got there, we went to a Delta gate, 
and we waited for a supervisor to board all the people that were getting ready to go to Detroit, and then she came and talked to us, and I told her our situation. They Delta took us to the transit hotel and booked us a room for 36 hours. You know, usually they book them in 12-hour increments, and it's about $125 for 12 hours. And Delta paid for the 36 hours and for three meals each, dinner, breakfast, and lunch the next day. So, you know, that was really nice of them. They, you know, they really treated us right. And so this is the lounge where we ate the three free meals. And then after that last meal that we ate at that particular lounge, then we were able to get into the Delta Lounge and stay there until our flight took off for Minneapolis. This is in the Korean transit area, the areas where, any of you been to Incheon, the airport there? Yeah. So it's, it's a very modern and nice. This is a, <clears throat> a desk around the transit hotel, which is uh, right across or just down from the Delta Lounge. Now, we went to Minneapolis. So we were supposed to fly from Seoul to Minneapolis and then tr uh, transit in Minneapolis to San Antonio. But our flight in, in Seoul was delayed because of mechanical problems. So when we got to Minneapolis, we couldn't make our connection. So I already had an email from Delta when we were standing in immigration saying, your uh, coupons for your hotel and restaurant are waiting for you now. And so I'm, I'm flying the medallion with Delta because I fly Delta quite a bit. And so they really treat us, treat us well. So they got us through immigration and, and got our luggage. We put our luggage back in uh, to send it down to San Antonio. And then... The, the Delta agent took us to the place where we waited for the shuttle and we went to stay in the Radisson Blue that was connected to the Mall of America. So we got to stay next to the Mall of America and the, the second day we were there that night and then the next day we got to look around the Mall of America a little bit, went back to the airport, boarded our plane to San Antonio. When we got here, our luggage was already here. It came the day before. I wish they had told me. Because I stood there at the carousel waiting, you know, for my luggage. But anyway, when I figured it was all gone, I looked at my email. I looked at my phone. The email said, your luggage is at the, flight, at the uh, Delta office. I said, oh, okay. So, well, it's only, you know, it's only 30 yards away. It's not far. And so we got our luggage. And then we were going back to the hotel uh, that Stan and Carol had arranged for us. And it took us uh, 45 minutes to get a shuttle bus. To go, yeah, because they, I called three times and they didn't send one. And then finally, after I called the fourth time, they finally sent one. And then when it got there, we had we had uh, problems because we had booked for the day before and Stan had to train, change it. Anyway, blah blah blah. Anyway, long story short, we got to the hotel and spent the night before moving in to the uh, stay apartments on the next day. I want to thank everybody who had a part in taking care of our car while we were gone. I, 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 can't, I can't tell you how much we appreciate that. I know it was a, a problem, a big, uh, you know, a difficulty, but, but I really appreciate it and the fact that the car was there at the hotel when we got there in San Antonio, so we were able to get in it and put all our luggage in it and, and head on out. So we're really thankful for that. Anyway, back to Minneapolis. My wife had never touched snow before. She'd seen it out windows, you know, out the airplane window. And she'd seen it on, on TV or something, or movies. She'd never been in it. So 16 degrees outside in Minneapolis. We went outside the north from there, and they had the piles of snow, so she got to pick up some snow and, uh, and walk in it a little bit and, and took some pictures of her snow day in Minneapolis. Okay. I hadn't been watching my time. Okay. Um, this is the upcoming event. That will be taking place in Malaysia, June 8 through 10. We'll be going back to Indonesia sometime at the end of March. Uh, somewhere in the middle of May, we'll be going back to Malaysia to conduct gospel meetings there. 
and then middle to late May, and then be there for the Chinese Asian Bible Lectureship, which will take place uh, at that time in June, and then sometime middle to the end of June we'll be heading back to San Antonio. So that's an upcoming trip that's planned. Now how can you help? This is something we I just talk about wherever I go. Pray for our work. We appreciate all of the prayers that are offered on our behalf. One-time contributions are helpful in our work. Uh, of course, we appreciate the, the regular monthly contribution that, are, that is given by uh, the congregation here, as well as some of the individuals that are giving both monthly and uh, occasionally. And then tell others about our work in case they're interested in helping to do the things that we're doing. Here are some useful websites. You should know the first one. Uh, the second one is uh, World Video Bible School. Uh, GBN TV is also a useful site. IBTMinistries.org is Ron Gilbert. Uh, they have six Bible correspondence courses online in English there, and they are very useful in teaching. And then, of course, OABS. We're on OABS right now uh, through their uh, video. And then if you want to read uh, the mission reports, there are some January reports out in the rack in the foyer, but also anytime you can go to grubmissionwork.blogspot.com and read back all the way back to, I think, about 2011, uh, the monthly reports. And, of course, all of the contributions come to the Grub Mission Fund here in Shirts. Okay, so that's it. You can turn that off, Carl. I appreciate the opportunity tonight to make the report. If you have questions afterwards, Please feel free to ask. Uh, as we do in each service, we have an opportunity to extend the invitation of Christ. We never know when we're <clears throat> speaking who's listening. And we don't have any idea what people's needs are. And so when we come together, there may be someone who's not a Christian, who needs to obey the gospel, and needs to know that in order to become a Christian, we must hear the gospel, Believe it with all of our heart, repenting of our every sin. We confess our faith in Christ and then are immersed in water so that the blood of Christ can wash away our sins. We rise to walk in newness of life. We're added to the Lord's church that he promised to build and that he built almost 2,000 years ago. And in Christ, all spiritual blessings are available to us. And as we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sins. It may be that there are some here tonight who are members of the Lord's body, but have not been living as they should and need to make those right in the sight of God. If that's the case, we're ready to help you in any way that we can. We've selected a song to give you that opportunity and to encourage you. And if we can assist you in any way, we would urge you to come as together we stand and sing. <laughs> Jesus is tenderly calling me home, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of love will thou roam farther and farther away? Calling today, calling today. Calling, 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 calling. 
now turn to number 283. I understand that we have those who desire to be partaking of the Lord's Supper, and so we'll sing this song with regard to that preparation. Number 283. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain, Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer, giving thanks for this bread. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth, humbled himself as a servant, lived in the flesh, and he gave himself willingly to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this bread that represents the body of Christ. On the night he was betrayed, when he gave to his apostles, he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Help us to remember this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's also give thanks for the fruit of the vine. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us of our sins. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that Jesus took the cup when he said, This is the New Testament in my blood. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us, that we would be able to focus our attention on, on the sacrifice that Jesus made and always be mindful and remember that it was his blood that cleanses us of our sins, and it was our sins that put him on the cross. But we give thanks to thee, Father, 
that he did so willingly, that he fully submitted himself to your will, and he did this thing that brought salvation and made it available to all mankind, to those who will humble themselves and obey your word. Thank you for this fruit of the vine that represents his blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very quickly, we'll cover the announcements tonight. Again, I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, the lesson we heard this morning and the report that we heard this evening, very, very good information. Very glad that we were able to, to receive those messages today. So thank you both for that. Please keep uh, Regina A.G. and Etta Grubb uh, in your prayers. Um, both were under the weather, feeling a little bad. Uh, Regina potentially was exposed to COVID, and Etta is fighting uh, something that's could potentially be allergy related, but uh, hopefully that's all that is. Remember the 29th uh, after the morning worship, we will have our annual report to the to the congregation. Northern Oaks is doing a Ladies Day on the 21st of January. Ladies of all ages are welcome. The uh, this morning I mentioned that uh, they may or may not let you in to if you want to go see Betty at uh, New Haven. I think the, the best thing to do is just call before you go, and you'll find out what's happening for that day. They'll let, they'll let you know where they're at. The Sewing Circle will be on the 28th of January at 10 a.m. in the Annex. And next, February, uh, February 12th, a few Sundays from now, we're planning a uh, congregation-wide potluck sweetheart luncheon. Uh, the details will follow. I, I hope to not confuse anything too much, but... Uh, Meat may or may not be provided. We're still working out those details, but uh, it will be more of a traditional congregational fellowship. And uh, those are all the announcements we have right now, so please be standing. And yes, yes. Sir? Don't get the ladies' classes tomorrow on Tuesday. The ladies' classes uh, on the, the normal time? Okay, yep, so thank you for that. Yep, the... Uh, 7 p.m. on Zoom tomorrow and I believe Tuesday morning at the, at the normal time for that as well. So thank you. I'll be standing and we'll have our closing prayer and closing song. Number 169, Have Thine Own Way. Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Have Thine Own Way. come to you this evening, thanking you for your many blessings, allowing us all to travel here safely, allowing us to hear this report. We thank you for allowing John Grubb to have a uh, wonderful, safe trip back here. 
I pray that you be with those that are sick, those that have lost loved ones, those that are in the announcement. I pray that you allow us to have safe travels back to our home if it is will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.